Hey there, lead dev. This is Nick Caldwell, VP of Engineering for Twitter, formerly VP of Engineering at Reddit, Chief Product Officer at Looker, General Manager at Microsoft. Happy to be here at the conference this year. Looks like a bunch of great content. I've been really enjoying it. Um, my session is going to be about how you grow your career from manager to director. This is one of the most important career inflection points that I think we all have to deal with. One of the most challenging as well because what got you into your management role isn't what's going to make you successful uh, at the director level. Okay, first off, what are we even talking about here? You're thinking about getting into a director role. What do directors do? Well, directing is a middle management job. <laughs> Congratulations, you are now part of the machine. Um, some negative things that will happen when you're a director. First, uh, no one will tell you good job anymore, <laughs> right? Uh, second, you are very likely to lose your ability to code. Uh, at the director level, if you have to jump into the code base and start making urgent changes, it probably is a sign that something has gone really, really badly. You have to build an organization that can get uh, uh, the job done without you getting your hands too dirty. And for some people, that's a really, really tough transition to make. Um, third, as a middle manager, you have to interpret executive strategy and be able to explain and communicate it down into your organization, as well as structure the organization to meet whatever those strategic goals are. That's the essence of, of a middle management job, all right? Taking uh, the strategy from the top, interpreting it, and building an organization to execute on that strategy. Now, uh, the cool thing about all this, I think we talked about the negatives, the cool thing about this is that at the director level, you're going to have unprecedented access to additional resources, people, you'll have much more authority and control over how strategy gets implemented, you'll be able to contribute to some at some level to the development of that strategy as well. The key thing here is, it's a very different role from being an engineering manager. You are going to have to learn how to think and operate differently at the director level. And I thought I'd give you three, uh, three tips, things that I've learned over the course of my career. Hopefully they will help you. Now the first lesson is you have to learn how to get off the floor. And what does that mean exactly? Well, if you think about your engineering team as being, um, you know, you being the head of a crew of line level engineers, getting off the floor means that you have to kind of pop up, get yourself uh, off of working side by side with one team and think about how you're going to operate when you've got multiple teams to oversee at the same time. Um, now, this is really tough. It was really tough for me because being a line manager, I, I think, is arguably one of the most fun things you can do. Um, you get to know every person on the team uh, on an individual basis. You think about how to map their wants and desires into the needs of what the organization is trying to accomplish. You're responsible for the very fine details of day-to-day of -day execution and success. Um, you know, it, it can be really rewarding because you can see as a manager directly how your work and energy contributes into the happiness of individual people uh, within the organization. Um, and I, I think that's a great starting point for every manager. Um, so a great manager needs to be all about empathizing with the people on the team and understanding their wants and desires and so forth and so on. Now, a good director needs to remember what that was like, but it's actually a very, very different job. Um, at the director level, you've got to think less about the individual one-to-one -one connection and much more about how the group as a whole operates because you're going to have multiple teams that you deal with. Um, I think for me, uh, this was an incredibly tough transition. I, up until I had around 30 reports, I still did one-on-one -on -one, uh, <laughs> meetings with all of them weekly, weekly one-on-ones with 30 people. It was getting to the point where uh, my one-on-ones were essentially like 10-minute uh, walking sessions, we just go for a walk in the park. Um, so, you know, someone who loves that element of trying to, to get to know every person on the team, this is something that you just can't do past a certain scale. So what do you do instead, uh, you know, when you've got to manage uh, more and more people? So at scale, I think there's 
couple different things you have to do differently when it comes to managing people. First is, how are you going to communicate what you want done? Uh, you can't do one-on-ones and weekly meetings as much as you, as you did in the past, but maybe replace that with a better written communication in terms of newsletters. Or if you want to be modern, think about doing maybe a weekly podcast. We did that uh, at Looker and it was really, really successful. Um, additionally, you need to think more about how you're going to track progress at scale. You know, if you've got a small team, one-on-ones, you can, uh, or one Kanban board, you can pretty much, you know, keep on top of everything. But when you're talking about managing three, four teams at the same time, you're going to have to come up with a more systemic way to uh, hold your teams and your, your people accountable. So for me, I like to use uh, at that scale, OKRs or other mechanisms where you still make it clear what you want accomplished. All right, but you're passing the responsibility for tracking the day-to-day execution toward those goals down into your engineering management level. All right, so that's tip number one. People and how you manage your organizations are going to change. You've got to get off the floor. Lesson number two is how you manage the shape and structure and resources within an organization. Um, the way this was put to me a couple years ago was, was from a manager who I, I work for named Kevin. I really respected him quite a bit. And he said, Nick, when you're an engineering manager, think about it as you're um, tending a single garden. And you can carefully pot and plant and water every individual flower. Uh, at scale, though, when you're managing multiple teams, it's more like you're uh, in charge of parks and rec. <laughs> like you have to control the entire landscape. You have to decide which hills exist or whether or not a, a path is going to, or a river is going to flow between certain uh, neighborhoods. Um, it becomes much more about terraforming. It's a real shift in mindset about how you think about the people on your team and, and, and what you have at your disposal to get jobs done. So this lesson is that when you become a director, you have to ask yourself the question, well, what do I direct? Well, when I was a manager, I managed people. And when I'm a director, I'm directing resources. And those resources are people, funds, contractors, vendors, all the different things that a company has at its disposal now become yours to configure and deploy to get work done. And, uh, this can be a, a huge <laughs> challenge because you have now shifted into a mode where you're popping up a level and thinking about how do I deploy this pool of resources to accomplish different tasks. It's a very, very different approach to solving problems because you're one level removed. So some things that change here when you become a director. Uh, first, You've now got to think about your responsibility towards shifting people around or put another way, reorganizing them. I would claim that you can't really be a successful director until you've managed a reorganization. And more to the point, you might have to manage a reorganization that doesn't directly benefit you before you can claim the title of being a good director. Um, Second, you have to learn to work within the resources that have been granted you. So when you're an engineering manager, at least one of my favorite things to do was to always complain that I didn't have enough headcount. And you might be able to get away with that to a certain extent when you're a director, but part of the challenge when you're a director is learning how to work within the resources that you already have at your disposal. And only until, only until after you've really thought through how you're going to configure your team or deploy budget do you get the opportunity to go back uh, to your executive team and say, hey, look, I'm really tapped out. I want more headcount. So uh, it's a mark of a junior director to constantly be asking for more people. It's a mark of a, a more seasoned director to be working within resources, building a case for how the organization needs to grow and expand over time, and then making that case if more resources are, uh, are needed. I would say super advanced director maybe even knows when to give up resources and pair back in order to support other people uh, or other teams within the organization as a whole. Uh, a quick story about how I had to learn this lesson. 
uh, back at Microsoft, I had a team which was building a mobile business in intelligence application. Uh, it was my favorite team. It was the first mobile team that I'd ever inherited. I grew it from about seven people to 20 people. Uh, we had a blast. I, I loved working with that organization. The, the challenge was they were building uh, Windows mobile applications. And <laughs> um, shortly thereafter, uh, you know, uh, the team or, or the organization decided that we weren't going to so support Windows Mobile. We we're going to shift over to uh, iOS and Android development. And I had to take that team and break it apart and redistribute it and its members throughout the rest of the organization. And it was one of the most painful things uh, I had to do. First time I ever had to do a, an organiz a reorganization that large and cut a project, which I'd spent more than a year on, but pretty obvious in retrospect that that was the right thing to do, not only for the people, but for the business strategy uh, itself. Um, so uh, lesson number two, when you become a director, you do have to think about managing a pool of resources and distributing them in the way that's most appropriate to achieve your business goals. Finally, lesson number three, this is your approach to problem solving. And uh, this was a, a quote uh, that one of my better managers uh, gave me uh, several years ago. He said, Nick, sometimes you've got to know when you need a bucket of water and sometimes you need to know when you've got to build a fire department. Now, another way to put this is that when you're a director, you think about pro solving problems with systems, okay? So you don't dive in and start coding, or if you do, something's gone really haywire within your organization. <laughs> Instead, you have to kind of hang back, look at the situation uh, and how your teams are operating, the broader business context, and you have to decide what systems you're going to create and deploy in order to meet business challenges over time. All right. So one of the cool things about this is that it gives you an opportunity to learn and experiment with many different ways of developing software. Uh, when I was a director, I remember the first year, I got to have um, a team working in Kanban, another team which was doing a more scrum, uh, you know, formal scrum methodology. We had some teams with uh, none of the above. And for me, that was an incredible learning experience because I got to understand that there are many, many ways to approach software development and that at large, at, high, at large scale, it's less about being fixated on any one particular system and much more about developing a toolkit so that as new challenges arise, you can reach into your toolkit, pick the right approach, or maybe adjust it slightly for the current situation, and then move ahead with some confidence that you've seen and operated uh, using this system before, and it's very likely that it will work in whatever new challenge that you're trying to address. Now, I suppose it would be remiss of me if I didn't give you a warning here. Uh, as you become a director, you can't, uh, you can't take your hands totally off the wheel. It's important to know when to dive deep, when to grab that bucket of water and go put a fire out. And that means I would strongly advise you to think about ways to detect when stuff is going wrong within your organization. You'll find that when you get very, very large teams, 50 plus, it becomes harder and harder for your people to feel comfortable coming to you with, with problems. So you've got to set up systems to detect when things are going wrong. That can be weekly execution reviews or, or OKR check-ins. Um, you certainly do that. For me, I also try and use skip level one-on-one to develop relationships with people deeper in the organization or I always have someone uh, that I can go to who I can trust to give me the real skinny on what's happening within my organization. Um, always have some way to, un to know when things are about to go off the rails. If we want to stick with the fire department analogies, you've got to set up some smoke detectors. Okay, so that's it. Three tips. First, remember, you have to learn how to get off the floor. Second, you're going to have to learn how to manage pools of resources at the director level. And then finally, you're going to have to solve problems with systems. If you'd like to learn more about this, the number one resource I can recommend, it's pretty hard to find, but hopefully it's still out there. It's a presentation called The Fast Track to VP of Engineering done by a gentleman named Wade Chambers. Hopefully that'll be available online if you Google for it. 
And if you would like to learn more from me, I'm Nick Caldwell at Nick Cald at Twitter, or you can reach me on my website, nickcaldwell.com. Hope you learned something from this presentation. Good luck in your journey from management to director. And then hopefully we'll see you at the executive level soon as well. Good luck out there.